the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Okay, I would like to... I don't know. I don't want to take the piss out of them. I, I want to say that I understand where they've been. Yes, we can um, empathise with this situation. I really do. This is um, SBS has a 24-hour news channel called World Watch. Uh, and here are the presenters. Look at them. They look so happy to be there. Yep. Oh, look at them. Three They're of them. They've got of a joy. job. Yep. They're wearing blazers. Yep. yep. Good on you. She's wearing a blouse. Why not? Very professional. Launched last May. With oh, millions of dollars in yes. federal government funding. Fantastic. Um, it receives bulletins from th- um, from news outlets in 30 different countries. Yeah. So that is so they're way more informative than like, this show. Yeah, le- legit worldwide news yeah, yeah. rather than just, you know, what's yeah. happening in Sydney. Okay. Since <laughs> it launched, it has consistently managed only a zero in the ratings. Now, that means that the number of people watching is so low on average, it is not significant enough to create a score. So, and that, <laughs> we so can't even get a score TV out of ratings it. are done by a selected number yes. of households having a literal box attached to their TV that records what they're watching. Yes. That means that nobody yes. that owns those boxes, boxes was watching. Was watching at all. at all. They are doing these people with their blazers and their blouses mm. and their suits. They're getting dressed every day. They're doing their rehearsals. They're having their makeup put they're, they're, on. They're, they're going to work. And Somebody's there, writing the news. There, there, there's some people filming. There's a whole team there. And they're doing it for nobody. <laughs> SBS used to run a test patterns that would actually score, and that does not. <laughs> score. Do you know what? Do you know how much money they'd save a year in um in like laying off the camera crew because the camera why film it? No one's watching. Yeah, they must right. just do it to each other. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you must just talk to each other. I mean, no, the, the, those, it's the same result. Those three are the best informed people in this country. Like they, yeah, know, yeah. they know so much stuff, know. but no, they can't oh. share it with anybody. And, and, and also on that, um, they have so little impact that not even their family and friends are watching. As it turns, <laughs> oh out. my I mean, god, out their family and friends obviously don't have one of those boxes attached <laughs> to their TV. You'd put, you think they'd put spot. their hand up? <laughs> it's mortifying um, for some people when um, you're doing your job for no yes. one. It's happened to us a couple of times. One, it was at ECU, Nelly and I on stage. It was ECU open day. Yeah. We we're up at June Delap, yeah. and it, it was early in the day because it was, it, was the the, it sort of started at eleven and went yeah, all afternoon. And most people turn up in the afternoon, but we were on stage at eleven o'clock, yeah. um, and it was raining, yeah. and there was all these chairs set out. Oh, like, in front okay, of like, the stage. and it seemed to me right now, many, it seemed many? to me like that. Yeah. It was enough for the Super Bowl. Right. There would have been, <laughs> there there there. Would have been probably two hundred chairs set out. Yeah, I saw two thousand. And okay, two hundred's a lot. Two hundred's a lot. That's a lot. There was yeah, like one lady standing under a tree over yonder, <laughs> <laughs> and we're like interviewing this woman on stage about, <laughs> about her research into cyberbullying. Science or something. And it's like, and then we had a scientist come on yeah, after us, and yeah. here we are presenting them, and we're like, now welcome on stage. Well, what are we saying it to? Why are we doing this? I think the lady <laughs> with the umbrella over yonder was actually the next person we were interviewing. So she was just waiting <laughs> in the <best> slot. <laughs> to no one, now, why did we go ahead? Now, the people who um, rendered your services, were they, like, really happy with it? Oh, great job. Well, they, seemed, oh, they, 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 they were like, very encouraging. Like, they were like, oh, yeah, keep going. Great. Keep going. Yeah. Why? Can you come back next year? Why I are think, we keeping on going? I think their theory was that people would hear us and flock. <laughs> My thing is, my, no my thing is, like, turn, like, let's turn, let's stop it now. Like, you save money on electricity. This microphone's chewing up power. <laughs> like, what's the point of this? Anyway, so the other time for us, and we all felt this one, was when we did an appearance at the Telstra store. There used to be a Telstra yes. store just, just down, down on, um, Subiaco. on Hay our, Street. On Hay Street here. And it was on the day of Will and Kate's wedding. And Masto was there. It was the first time yes. we really yes. ever met Masto. So they had some West Coast Eagles there as well. And I think Aaron Sandlands. I think Aaron Sandlands. Well. Well. And I think it, was, it wasn't like, it was like a one hour or two hours. I can't remember. I think oh, it was two. It was two hours because we're doing it to get a free iPhone. Yes. Because um, we get paid in iPhones here. Um, <laughs> so anyway, and like literally one a woman one and her daughter, came, yes. a woman and her daughter came in. <laughs> and but you could tell, and then, then, then um, she was like, and there was more of us than there were of customers. Yes. It was so more. And the, the, the Telstra staff, I think, were going, they're supposed to pull in the crowd. What's yeah, going no, on? but it's like there was a royal wedding on. And that lady, then she and her daughter left. left. And then about 45 minutes, mm, they came back they again came because back. they felt so sorry for her. <laughs> they did. They did. So but we, but we, were watch a, we were able to watch the wedding oh, on TV because oh, yeah. no one was interrupting. So we just had to watch the wedding on TV. Well, and then at the end, we um, put our hands out and got an iPhone and left. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Can I add one more? Oh, no, we're yes, on a bit please. of a road. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> we used to do uh, footy slappers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And our whole team, <laughs> the whole okay. team of people 
with us. Yeah, so footy got... slappers was a, uh, imagine Turk like slapper. a thing that ro- ro- rotates and it has footballs on there and it slaps people in the face as we ask some questions. Go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So then um, our boss at the time, he thought it was a great idea that if people registered, we would go out to their individual <laughs> workplaces yes. and or possibly houses, but we'd go out to no, these workplaces, workplaces. Yeah. And, um, and do the game with them. So we'd do this after work. We'd go there, all of us all together. There were so many people. So, so many there was, people. There was us three, but there was somebody to film it. There were Casanovas to set it up and take it oh, down again. It so bad, and I think our producer used to come too, yeah. didn't oh, she? Yes. Yes. Oh, she's like, yeah. yes, oh, I did. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did. And we were rocking out to workplaces. And, 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 oh, and, and, like, and our boss. And the promotion. Anyway, it was And there'd be like two people in this yeah, workplace. Like and, and then they looked, and they were looking, and it's like, w- w- can you guys go? <laughs> Yeah, we're going to get back to work. <laughs> no, this is a, no, I think they're just expecting something that they right. weren't getting, like the entourage. We anyway, want to talk to you. Yes, yeah, so we want to know: um, Have you done your job for no one? Yeah, Whether or practically this no one. Be in um, the hospitality industry. Yes, yes. yes. Um, you know, maybe you're a bus driver MC, just yeah. ro- driving yep. an empty bus around yep. half Not the day. Not getting a customer all day. That could be terrible. Oh, yes. dri- an empty bus driver. That's sad. Yes, that's pretty sad. Oh, cool. oh you probably you are getting it. paid, so that's okay. It's yeah. been quiet. But having a having your own business or something, no one's coming in. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Doing your job for no one, 13, 24, 10. We're going to give something to someone. Uh, tickets for them and three mates to go and see Briefs. Dirty Laundry it's at good Fringe fun. World. Um, hilarious show. Fringe World superstars Briefs are back with their new hit show, Dirty Laundry. Don't be jealous. Head to fringeworld.com.au to grab your ticket. All right, 13, 24, 10. Have you had to do your job for practically nobody? And how mortifying was that exactly? I'm probably doing our job for no one this morning. Well, we know we're doing it for Lisa because she's the only person that called. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling. Lisa, Lisa, the only person to us that's listening right now is you. I tell you what, we're on no, point, though. It's me. Yeah, so um, just let us yes. know um, what time you're listening to, and then when you're finished, we'll, we'll finish. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened, Lisa? Have you been in the scenario? Oh. I've had a business, um, it's called Get Stuff Potatoes at Fremantle Market. And I'm Wait, say that, slow, say, that no slow, say that slower. I didn't get your plug quite right there. Oh, um, my business is called Get Stuff Potatoes, and I oh, trade yeah. Friday to Sunday. Oh. Um, and I don't get any customers, but I still love it. I'm still there, you know, I'm still trading. <laughs> what do you mean, you? At Freo Markets, you must do, because there's so many people. Yeah, no. Through. Well, there's a reason why, because I'm in the toilet alcove. So, like, no one can see me. <laughs> so you can, you can go and have a pee and pick up a potato at the same time. Yeah, people oh, are going on it. I'm in the toilet alcove. Is toilet that the alcove. cheapest rent, is it? It is. Oh my god! It's it's but lots of people pass well by the toilet. So, okay. Yeah, tell but me, so, people so don't want to eat on the way to the toilet. Yeah. They don't want to eat. Like, <laughs> I mean, how quick is it going to come out? Yeah. Well, they've just gone and dropped off a spud. They don't want to put one back in. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Lisa, tell me about. Um, so, you just want to start <laughs> loading your spuds, yeah? Tell me about your load. Are they loaded spuds? What, what are they? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're a bit different. So, I do like a vegan one and a vegetarian because it used to be um, gluten free and vegan, and that didn't work because I'm right next door to Brazil. Barbecue. <laughs> um, <laughs> the vegans don't like that. <laughs> so then I introduced beef, but maybe it was too late to introduce beef then because people are like, well, yeah, no. So then the, 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 the few vegan customers you had got upset because you were selling beef. Well, they didn't come back. They didn't have enough yeah. strength to walk back. I've That's ruined it all. Now even the vegans don't come. <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking Frio, though, Lisa. You'd call it well. I know. Uh, well, that's I mean, how I started and I thought vegan, free so mantle, okay, gluten-free. So, mm. so Lisa, you, you, you turn up for work. You open your store. I do. And you, I'm there. you've you got your potatoes ready to go. Everything's chopped up. You're all good. And then you just wait? Is it what? What do you I do? I sit there. You know, I make my own fun. Yeah, <laughs> okay, doing sweetheart. what? Sweetheart. Oh, sometimes I sing, like I play music really loud. People are like, I love your music. Oh, <laughs> oh that's nice. I smile. Um, I talk to people. How do you pre- Sometimes I just step outside the stall and I'm like, hey, how you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> um, how do you pre prepare your potatoes? Are they having, like, what do you have to do? I deep fry them, so they're not that healthy. They taste good. Oh, vegans would love that. Um, <laughs> Come down and try them. But what do you put in them? So- I've got no customers. <laughs> What do you put in them? Plenty of potatoes. <laughs> give us an idea of what you chuck in a, in a, in a stuffed spud there. I'll give you like the full the full roundabout of how it goes. Oh, yeah, so there's yeah. like a salad mix on the bottom and then I deep fried potato. Yeah. I take the middle of the fried potato out and I mush it with um, avocado, okay. onions and mushrooms. And then on top of that, I got lentils, chickpeas, mushrooms, onions, spinach. Then on top of that, you can either have Greek yogurt or coconut yogurt or and then normal cheese or um, coconut cheese. cheese. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, and then on top of that, grated carrot, a yeah. little bit of avocado, a little bit of tomato. Yeah. <laughs> And then keep in mind or vegan mind. Well, that's, well, that, that's a lot. Yeah. So, Lisa, can you now give me an ex- can you now give me an example of a yummy one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll give you the meat one. I yes, feel like you like the meat yeah, one. Give it, tell, 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 that, tell, me, tell me to the meat one. Go. All of that minus the um, the lentils, chickpeas, mushrooms, and onion is um, beef with mushrooms and onion. Okay. okay. Yeah. And it's got flavours in it. So the beef one's really nice. It's got flavours. Yeah, like it's, it's got flavours in it. It's got flavours. It's got flavours. I can't tell you the secret spices. No, no, of course. Well, why? why? No one's also. trying to get the secret. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a secret if no one wants to find out? Tell you. <laughs> Lisa, how long can you do this? Go Just going along oh, to honey. sit in your potato oh, stall. I've been trading for, for like two years. Well, you say oh, trading, but heart. I don't know that you are trading. Off. No, she's just at the market. Oh, look, sometimes I get customers. Yeah. Okay, Lisa. Right. I, I guess the advantage is when you're going off to um, uh, the bank the next day to drop off the the day's the take, uh, you don't have to have a secured guard around <laughs> you at any stage. Definitely not. I'm okay. talking like last weekend we traded at 30 bucks for one day. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Yeah, so we have a very positive um, All right. spin on it. So Let's once again, once it. again, tell everyone your business. It's called Get Stuff Potatoes at Fremantle Market. You can find it in the toilet alcove in front of the ACDC site. Okay. Um, please, I implore you, if yeah. you're down at the Fremantle Market, so you go there and w- like, give her a Run go. Run her off her feet. Give her a go. Um, say um, the, the promo code Nathan, Nat and Sean, you get 80% off. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You get an extra spoon of lentils. I go, yeah, you'll get an extra spoon of lentils. <laughs> and then tag a photo in there and tag us in on social yeah, media. Yeah, that's right. Oh, Lisa, we're going to have to check in with you to see if there was a bumper sales on the weekend. Well, we uh, established also that nobody was listening to us, so I don't oh, no, have a lot too. of faith in that. <laughs> Oh, I know, I never get through. Oh. I never yeah. get through. Oh, hang on, how come I'm getting through? This is, no, this is fate. This might be the day that this your business gets launched. It's time. Because, at least not only are you hearing this now, this will also be in Reheated yes. um, on, on Saturday show as well. Yeah. And it'll be on the podcast as well. You're getting advertising oh, left, beautiful. right and centre. Yeah. Oh, we'll I invoice love you guys. for that later. Everyone's going to be clamouring yeah, to get later. a stall near the toilet. You they get $30 are. a day. <laughs> yeah, the daddy's going to be packed. New Just, businesses. If we can sell oh. two more spuds, that's $60 a day. That's all we need that's to do. So good. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. You've been a joy. Oh, um, um, uh, hi, Kara? Kara? Yeah. Hey, Kara? Kara. How do we say yeah. your name? It's Kyra. 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 We would have got Kyra. Kyra. <laughs> okay, Kyra. Have you, done, have you done your job to nobody? Uh, I have. So I work for an industry association and we have a training arm. And we thought, you know what? We want to do an end of year party for our apprentices. They're, they'll love it. We'll do free drinks, free food. We'll just get them in for a couple of hours. It'll be a party. Yeah. Um, we had about 200 registrations and about 10 people show up. <laughs> we had about free food 30... and drinks and they're apprentices. Oh, That's amazing. Exactly. We thought, it's a no-brainer. They're all going to be there. Of course. But we had about 30 staff there and 10 apprentices. And we we're like, <laughs> all right, staff party. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> the apprentices are here, but it's mostly about us. <laughs> 30 staff and 10 apprentices. Did you put yeah. on the turps or was it just yes, cool drinks? No, free drinks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, free drinks, free food. It was oh, just... it was going to be a good party if anyone showed up, but... <laughs> what okay. You, okay, what did you do with all the leftovers? Yeah, yeah. All the leftovers did everyone, stuff? like, take, like, a Bay Marie home? A slab? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, it was mostly canapes and things like that, so we ate as much as we could, and we sort of said to the staff at the venue, all right, well, it's your turn now, too, so <laughs> oh, have wow. a good night. <laughs> did the apprentices have a good time? They did. The ones that were there had a really good time, and it was the first time we'd run it, so we sort of said, well, hopefully next year we get a few more, so wow. we'll see how we go at the end of this year. Oh, okay. So oh, so that was just a couple of months ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It was just a Christmas time. <laughs> so funny. Pretty, pretty soul-destroying, but, you know. Yeah, can't yeah, wait for the no, 2023 no. edition. Exactly. Uh, Thanks, Kyra. Rachel, hello. Hi, how are you going? Good, Rachel. Right. Right. Have you done your job to nobody? Yeah, mainly on Sundays and public holidays. There was a, uh, we used to work in a retail store in West Perth and basically no one would come in, maybe one person, and I'd be lucky to make a hundred bucks for the day and they were paying me 70 bucks an hour. Yeah. Oh. Because, I mean, West Perth is really, it's a weekday thing because it's all office it workers in there, yeah. isn't it? They're not really working public holidays and weekends, are they? No, it shuts down and yeah. we were literally the only thing open. Basically, to provide a service to the people if they came in. So, yes. what, so what sort of business was it without telling us the business? Uh, <laughs> um, a betting store. 
Oh, okay. A betting store? Why wasn't Sean there? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's one closer to home. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And now I'm super confused. No. Oh, if it's a betting totally store open, you. Sean's in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, Rachel. yeah. Wow. West Perth. I can't know. $70 an hour to be here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never have that problem yeah, from this day on. That's right. <laughs> Thanks, Rach. Sharon's in Forestfield. Hello. Hello. How are you? Sharon, Sharon. Have you done your job to no one? Oh, yes. Uh, many times. I'm a uh, lecturer. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's terrible. You can actually tell when um, there's an assignment due in another course yes. because no one turns up. <laughs> and <laughs> students, bloody, oh, sorry, not bloody students, but students, no, yes. are students. Yep. the biggest procrastinators, yep. of um, myself included. Yep. But um, And it's really, when you first start doing it, it's really awkward lecturing to no one. It's just an empty stadium, you know, it's an empty... Oh, empty you, you have to go awkward. ahead, you right, because they film it. Yes. Is that the That's it. thing? Yeah. Or there's How one person there. Yeah, they... They record it, they film it, um, all of that. It's It can be embarrassing because when you hear yourself back, um, and I'm sure you've listened to yourself on the radio. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, it's um, awful. horrendous. Uh, <laughs> you hear that awkward laugh or you make a joke and no one else is laughing. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, just like an empty... Oh, and Sharon. it's like cricket, Sharon, this you know? is mortifying. And then, and then like, yep. so say if there's one kid in there, like, do you, do you ask questions? <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, yes. And they get... And, and I will say things like, I'm just going to stop the recording now and we'll have a chat. Okay. You know, so... <laughs> Oh. They do miss out on things. So, so how big is yeah. the auditorium in terms of how many people would be able to be in there on a uh, given day? It would have been, um, back in the day, it was um, at least, you know, there's ones for 200 yeah. um, that was standard. Oh, um, or a big even, just the, even just the 30-seater. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you'd get one or two people. Yeah. The worst thing was when a guest presenter was scheduled. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know? <Sharon. laughs> what do you Bye. say? I'm so, <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry, but oh. get up there and do it. Oh, I buy them coffee, lots of coffee, oh. and you know treats, and uh, just say I'm and you're mortified. Like, people I'm really so do sorry. like my course. Yes. Um, what was yeah, your yeah, course? What were, you, what were you lecturing? Um, well, it was health information management. Unfortunately, it's uh, been closed down now. But um, oh, wait, well, it sounds yeah. like everyone wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. No one turned up. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we know they didn't go into the spud bind. No, no, that's right. Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Podcast. Australian Idol is back oh, on yes, our screens on. on Channel 7 and 7 Plus at 7.30. And one of the judges that we're going to be seeing an awful lot of is Harry Connick Jr., who joins us now. Hi, Harry. Hi. Hello, Morning, Harry. Harry. We're very excited about Australian Idol. You've got a bit of experience, though, to be on this straight up. You've done plenty of idols. Yeah, I did it in the States for a few years, and it was it was awesome. I mean, I, I love the show. I've always loved it. You know, I remember being at the finale yeah. for the first year when Kelly Clarkson won. And I just, I'm a fan of the show. I think it's such great entertainment. And then I did it in the States as a mentor and a judge. And then Australian Idol called. And, well, I love Australia. Um, it just seemed like a no-brainer if, if yeah. it was possible to work it out with, you know, the rest of my life. And, and it was. And so I had a blast coming down there last October for the auditions and then we'll be back, you know, soon to do the live shows and I just cannot wait. Oh, Blake, Harry, brilliant. I'm wondering what they do to woo a big star like mm. you. So they say, we'd love you to come over and be a judge and idol and then you, do, do they say, like, where do you want to live and you can go and you can choose, like, a, a fully kitted out hotel or you can choose somewhere by the beach. What's the deal? They're paying me in Tim Tams and Vegemite. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure how you'd go with Vegemite. Surely you're not just you're getting on, bucket loads no, of that stuff. Of here. So here's the problem. So yeah. I've been to Australia a thousand times, yeah. and I, I've, nobody ever told me the right way to eat it. Like, you don't put a spoon in it and eat no. it like no. peanut oh. butter. So I finally, this last trip, somebody said, make some toast, put a little bit of butter on the hot toast, and then put the thinnest layer of Vegemite over the top. I'm obsessed. So I brought some home. And I made it for my wife, and she's like, all right, this is awesome. So now I love it. Now, oh, can, okay. can I make a suggestion? I you need a lot of butter. Mm. And yeah. I don't think it, like, I mean, personally, this is the way I like it. I don't like it to be, like, an even layer, like a thin layer on top. I like there to be little deposits here and there. Oh, like, no, I think that's a pretty good idea. Where yeah. 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 But, yeah. but for somebody starting out, I think you've done the right way. Oh, yeah, you started the easy job. way, and then and then you can build on that with time. And you know what else? Yeah, that'll it goes, be, I like, le- I'll level up to the yes. deposit. It goes nicely with cheese. Just saying, oh, yeah, cheddar cheese. Cool. It goes very well. 
Mark my words. Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys are pros, because I, I didn't even think about that. Somebody else said um, avocado on top. Is yep. Yeah, like also avocado great. Avocado toast with it. Mm. Well, that'll okay. work. They said they'll give me a lifetime supply, so <laughs> I'm doing idle. That's all it took. Good on you, Harry. Hey, one thing about idle in the past, because we haven't seen it for a while in Australia, um, the the people who have been on there have been really successful yes. in the past here in Lots Australia. Lots of success stories. Some of the other shows, the singing shows, we haven't seen people go on at all, no. but mm. the idle um, winners have just been fantastic. I think I know why. Because on idle, it's all about the kids. Like, it's not about us. It's, it's not about... Yep. yeah me or the other judges it's really about them and idol is brilliant at finding these people in these obscure places and then following their stories and developing them and the audience kind of falls in love with them and then it's old school you know they start with you know hundreds moves yep. down to 50 24 12 and then down to one and people just love that process and and they they, they also find great talent like i'm not kidding the talent that we saw in October was phenomenal, and I'm not exaggerating. You'll see what I mean when the yeah. show comes on, on on Monday night. Like it's it's really good. It's going to be very hard, you know, for the Australian audience to pick a winner because it's, it's a lot of talent. Now, Harry, I was wondering, like, uh, when I knew we were speaking to you, I thought, oh, how did Harry get into music? So I was reading all about you. I mean, granted, I use Wikipedia, so that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's touch and go. <laughs> but is it true that your parents were both lawyers that also owned a record store? Yeah, it, yes, that's true. But they, so they, they owned a record store when they were putting themselves to law school. That was right. way before I was born. That was in the in the 50s. And so by the time I came along... I was born in 1967. They were already the record shop wasn't wasn't happening anymore. But I grew up in New Orleans, and I, I had access to a lot of music, and that's what I loved. And so my parents made sure that I got a chance to play with a lot of the local musicians and be around music. And they made it. You know, I was very lucky to have parents that were supportive. So I got lessons and I got training from a very early age. God, so they that, must that have, had a lot. They to do must with have it. had an amazing record collection left over from some of the stock from the shop. Yeah, they just they just love music. So they mm. you know they had a lot of a lot of records from the mid fifties on, and and they played them around the house. I mean, it, it could have been jazz or classical or yeah. pop or whatever it was, but they just they were both fans of music. So my sister and I heard a lot of music growing up. Well, you know, you've sold twenty eight million records, so their investment definitely paid <laughs> off. And and on that, when we look at the judging panel, there's you. You know, your record s- speaks for itself. Amy Shark, uh, massively successful in this country. Megan Trainer is a singer songwriter. She's sold so much stuff. She's so successful. And then there's Kyle. Um, and Kyle, ha- you know, is not a musician. And <laughs> how does how does he go at judging musicians? Well, the, the cool thing about you know this panel is that we all have something completely different to offer. I mean, even among the three of us who do this for a living, you know, we we have you know diverse opinions. I mean, yes. sometimes you know we're looking at the same singer, and you'll get three completely different opinions. Sometimes we won't agree on you know much at all. Like even if you know, I might think they're really talented, and maybe Amy doesn't, or vice versa. Yeah. Um. So you know, Kyle brings his thing. You know, Amy and Megan bring their thing, and I try to bring. <laughs> My thing, and, and I think that's what, you know, hopefully will give the people some... I think among the four of us, we'll probably say things that people in the audience at home will be saying, oh, yeah, 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 I get that, I agree with that, and that's good, you know, because you, you, you don't want everybody to kind of agree all the time. No, 100%. Yeah. Do, you, do you get... I know what Cole's going to do. He's going to yes. shit-can some of the, yeah, of the, the artists. Do you, Harry, when you see some of them and they're just no good, are you honest and you're just like, no thanks, boop, see or you later? Or are you nice? <laughs> Well, I don't think it's nice or honest. Or I, I just, I, I think it's about, I think it is about being honest. But I'm never like mean. mean. I mean, I think on one of the trailers I saw of the upcoming shows, I said, "Look, music's not for you." I mean, when they take that out of context, you know, it, it's pretty harsh. But there's a little bit leading up to it. And, and listen, you know, some of these folks really do not have a chance of making it in this business, and clearly they haven't been told that. And I don't think it's mean to say 
I'm sure I you have a it. lot of gifts, yes. but this is this is a, this is you need to hear it. And yeah. I don't have a, I don't think that's mean though. Do you think that's no, mean? No, 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 no. I think you've saved them a hell of a lot of time because they've that's got a right. whole bunch of family around saying you're so perfect, you're yes. amazing. <laughs> I really do think it's a missed opportunity for you, um, uh, though, Harry. You should have um, uh, gone back into your character Daryl from Copycat, um, and then <laughs> Daryl could have even imagine Daryl could have dealt with these people. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could just say, yeah, "I'm going to invoke Daryl." <laughs> Yeah, on the live shows, I'm going to sit there and slowly pull out a knife and just lick it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking, you know? Larry. But not, yeah, I'm not going to give anybody any, you know, warning that I'm doing that. No. I'm just going to be that guy, like, for the, one of the whole live and shows. And they will so, never we'll go how, back to music we'll again. That does to my career now. <laughs> <laughs> I say hashtag more Daryl. We, we love your work, <laughs> Harry. It's exactly. so great to catch up with you again and have you back in our country, uh, you know, when you're back for the live show. So thank you so much and enjoy the Vegemite. Thanks, guys. I will. Good to, <laughs> good to talk to you and I'll see you soon. Bye. Good Bye. on you, Harry. Thanks, Harry. Take Bye. care, mate. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We're going to talk about the Australian Open right now and oh. um, one of the amazing things about the venue is the uh, roof opens and closes. Yes. But um, being in Melbourne, when the roof opens, um, sometimes rain gets in. Yeah, that's right. Because yeah, it, it takes a while to close yes. as well. Yeah, so, you yeah know, it doesn't when just it... go boosh. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. It doesn't slam shut. <laughs> and there's like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> in there, it's got to give the seagulls a chance yes, to survive. that's right. Um, so uh, people are going off about this image of the ball kids um, on their hands and knees. Uh, with, with towels. towels uh, drying the court. They're saying because these they kids are soaked, volunteers, they're yes, which and means they're not paid. It's unpaid right. labour, and, and yeah. that has been questionable already because of the hours that they're having to work late into the yep. night, and the fact yep. that other big um, Grand Slam tournaments yep. do pay their ball kids and we don't. So that had already been in the news, and then that footage of them on their hands and knees, like wringing towels out. You go, they're, so they're not slaves the at this but point. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't mind it. Look, there's two and a half thousand kids apply oh. to be ball kids every yeah, year, so there are, they are lining up. Honor, with, uh, with one in five of them actually being successful. So, but here's the funny thing, right? The prize pool is um, uh, seventy six point five million dollars yeah. that's on the table for Just those participating. Skim a little off the top. You could skim a little and give it because kids at the um, US Open they get yes. paid, and they they're not asking to be paid fifty dollars an hour. No. I think just a token payment to say Pay we appreciate your fine work over the last. At and the US yeah, Open, they, fifteen dollars an and hour. The kids sometimes get. in extreme heat as well. Yep. No, sometimes yeah, Wimbledon. Yeah, they pass out. At Wimbledon, the kids, uh, the ball kids, are given a flat rate of three hundred and fifty-one dollars a week. Yeah, but then if the money is taken out of that seventy-six million dollars, yeah. of you know, that How's means Novak that Novak's pay for the fuel for his private jet. Two point five, you know, million. It might be two point. Four, Four nine nine. nine. But yeah. you know what? Even deal, it man. would even be a really great. Um, I, I don't know. If the players thing, if the players volunteered, some money in like, like oh, we will give you half yeah. a percent of my winnings. Or, yeah, you know what I mean. Like even just like a, a gesture. Yeah, would be nice. I agree. Because I tell you right now, Sean doesn't. Sean these doesn't. kids. It's a volunteering position, and people are dying to do that thing. Bad luck. No, but, but sometimes, you sometimes, should exploit them. but sometimes you well, volunteer. They don't have to do it. They don't have no, to do no, it. Let me finish. Still, sometimes you can volunteer for something and then not realize what's about to happen. Yeah, that's right. And the other thing is the the tournament can't operate. Without them, they are a vital. The tournament's service. been going yeah. how long? Well, and, and for since that period, that the volunteers yeah. have been there. Oh. So, um, uh, <laughs> what's wrong? I know. I'm just saying. Like, um, uh, the thing is, like, change. Pay the kids. Whether that be it, I'm just talking about a bigger thing. Yep. Is that sometimes you volunteer for something you don't know what you're going to yourself oh, into? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. right. That's one, it. one minute you think you're going to be handing a ball to yeah. um, uh, Sitsipas, and the next minute you're on your hands and knees with a sopping wet towel yes. while the world's yes. watching yes. you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, you're going. Oh, when I get home from tonight's match, I'm going to watch some Netflix and not realising you're getting home at five a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and your mum's furious at you. <laughs> I think you need to like be really um, wary about volunteering sometimes. I mean, I it's really amazing don't. to volunteer oh, it because is what you're doing do. is you're giving your time and yeah. you are um, doing good for the community. And yeah. a lot of organisations, I don't think the Australian Open's one of them, rely on volunteers because if they had to pay them, they couldn't survive. Yes. And so volunteering for those organisations yeah. yeah. so yeah. important, but sometimes... You regret it. You find out that there's a bit more to that volunteer gig yeah. than you originally anticipated. That's what we <laughs> want to talk about. Um, we want to know if you've had volunteer regrets, all right? So, yeah, it's great you did it, but, like, you wish you didn't. Uh, we're going to give somebody $300 to spend at Matilda Bay Restaurant. Matilda Bay Restaurant's Cray on the Bay, fresh local crayfish, just $49 from now until the end of March. Look, we know you're a good person that you volunteered it out of the goodness of your heart, but then there's a tiny bit of you, like, either resented it or fully regretted it. That's what we want to talk about. Angela's in Duncraig. Hello. Yeah, 
Yeah, hi, guys. How are you? Good, Good Angela. Ange. Okay. How do you say your name, Angela? I just want to be clear. Angela. <laughs> Ange, what's up? Who volunteered? What's the story? Well, I wasn't actually the volunteer. I kindly volunteered my daughter to come and help at a sporting event that we had here. Mm. Oh, nice. And um, she didn't realise... She thought she was just going to be helping some kids out. Unfortunately, she had to wear the mascot suit <laughs> and walk around, <laughs> which she was absolutely thrilled about. Yes. She had to walk around for the day and she had to meet people and be nice to the kids and then get on the ground and, and do things. And the poor thing, she was sweating like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> it was such a hot day. By the time she took it off, she'd almost passed out. The poor thing, she had chasing everywhere. Oh, and that's a stitch up by you. Go home because she even needed a change of clothes. Sweet old. Yeah. What was um, the mascot character? A uh, uh, kookaburra. Oh. <laughs> So it was pretty Angela, funny. you're well, a terrible mother. Funny. Terrible yeah, mother. Yeah, yeah. Must she have been furious at you at the end of the day. And she didn't get paid for it. It was yeah, all voluntary. She, she doesn't really want to volunteer anymore. No, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yes. Mm. But that's what mums do, isn't it? We're good like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mate. They are. Well done, Angela. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Jackie's in South Guildford. Hi, Jackie. Hey, guys. How are you going? Good, Jackie. Yeah. What voluntary position did you regret? Well, my now husband of almost 27 years, when we were first, first dating, we met on a blind date. Second date, he said to me, tomorrow I'm volunteering at an animal refuge. Um, you know, would you like to come? And, oh, and I really like Oh, he him. loves animals. Oh can, I just say, can I just say, the stuff people do at the start of yes. a relationship, you didn't <laughs> want to go. Be like, oh, okay, I better act like I love it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I'm thinking, nice, fluffy animals. Yes. I can do that. And I really like this guy. So I got ready the next day. We went to the animal refuge and they gave me this big glove. And I'm thinking, okay. And then they handed me this this box, like a clip lid on it. And I'm yeah. thinking, okay, no, this is this is good. I can, you know, this is really cute. There's fluffy little wombats yeah. and everything oh, everywhere. So they lead me down the corridor yeah. and I kid you not, in the crate were live mice. <laughs> And I had to put my hand in and grab the live mice and feed them to an eagle. <laughs> but I Jackie. so cool because I was like, no, I can do this. I, really like this I have to do it. It was the grossest thing ever, and these poor little live mice are getting devoured by this massive eagle. Oh, sorry, no. I'm sorry, it was, like if it was a dead massacre. Mice, I'd be okay. Even it'd be better if it was dead mice. But just seeing a, <laughs> you seeing you end the life of something. I know. I but you're sustaining so the terrible. life of an eagle. I know. I would mean, just feel wrong. I know. It's an animal so rescue wrong. shelter, no, wouldn't it? And I love that. Putting that. my hands in and all these mice are just running around yes, all over that's my gross as well. And like, oh. And then you thought, yeah, this is the man for me. <laughs> oh, <right>. I can't <laughs> believe you know? that they, for a volunteer position, you got eagle feeding. <laughs> I thought some people would be sweeping out a pen or something. Yeah, but you got like... eagle feeding. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. I wasn't expecting that. that. Thank that you, great. Jackie. That was that was a journey. Mel, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Hi, how are you guys? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Show's nearly over. We're like all up and about. <laughs> 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 all right. What happened, Mel? Right. Um, so a couple of years ago, um, I worked for a particular telecommunications company, <laughs> uh, named as Elf, <laughs> and I uh, got really excited at the fact that when they were announcing um, the next car rally that was to be, um, it, it happened down at Langley Park. Yes. Yeah. And um, I required some staff to volunteer to be a spectator marshal. Oh, amazing. Um, okay. Because, yes. And I'm thinking, oh, great. And, you know, the adrenaline rush. Yeah, and you'll be able to watch it. Go, wow. Definitely, and um, you know that sensation of hearing the cars yes. as they get feeling it through your body. But that sounds excellent. What a so got down there, and we did like you, you know your five hour to six hour daily shift. So mm. it was just like having having a job and and you know working for that amount of hours, and you go off on your break. Yeah. So I started out there from you know the morning, having breakfast, and got through to the evening. Cut a long story short, yeah. and. Um, the distance of where you had to uh, spectate a marshal was practically maybe about 200 to two, uh, yeah, 2.5 um, metres away from where the cars would be Zipping going around. super fast, okay. zipping around, and the sound of those loud motor engines, and between that and the spectators of where the um, 
uh, you know, those seats, uh, how they sort of went up on the road. Yeah, yeah. So yes. you were down there on the ground level, mm. right in front of the cars as they're zipping around. This is fantastic going through in the heat towards the evening time and it's getting a bit darker. Cut a long story short again. <laughs> and, oh, I don't think you, you you you're cutting a long story short, but I'm here for it. Keep I'm going, here for Mary. it. Keep you going. Got, you can imagine, you know, that feeling of excitement yes, as well. I know. Something then suddenly told me it started hitting dark and you're hearing the sound of these engines coming past and you know the distance is not that far away. I sort of was thinking, ah, oh, gosh, maybe this is, might have not been such a good idea after all. <laughs> so my excitement soon turned into this terror. Scariness and terror. It's like, what have I done? <laughs> well, so you, so you quickly became terrified for your life, is what you're saying, Mel? That's it. See, that's yes. cutting a long story no. short. <laughs> Mel alone. <laughs> You're right on that. No, Mel, no, that was beautiful. Oh, I loved no, every, was... every hour of we, it. We, re- <laughs> <laughs> we didn't realise you were telling the story in real time. I love no. it. <laughs> no, thanks, Mel, you legend. <laughs> Lee is in Falcon. Hello. Good morning, guys. Hi, Hi Leah. Leah. Okay, <laughs> when did you regret volunteering, Leah? Uh, I volunteered for a dental study years ago yes. when I had funny, funny teeth. Yeah. And I, at the time, I was looking after an exchange student and she was a spoiled little brat and wouldn't get out of bed. <laughs> so I'm trying to get her to go to school. Literally, obviously, couldn't put my hands on her or anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. Which oh. is actually the problem of the, of the exchange Jeez. program. <laughs> what are they making all these rules for? <laughs> Leah, what, what, what are you doing? Tell me tomorrow, which do, oh, do you wish she could hit a hit? <laughs> what country was she, was she from, Leah? Oh... <laughs> uh, you know, an Asian country, but that's all I'm going to say. But okay. she was, she was just very rich and very spoiled. So anyway, right, yeah. so anyway, that was all good. But couldn't get her out of bed. Trying to get Perth, you know, living south of Mandra. Um, eventually got her out of bed. Tearing up the old back roads back in the day. <laughs> of the coppers were coming the other way. Pulled me over. Four hundred dollar fine. Um, and. At the time, I didn't have my rego sticker updated on my car, so they're, like, checking out my new rego sticker. Where's your new rego sticker? Well, it's in the uh, car, but I haven't put it on. Yeah. Yes. They let, me, they let me off that bit, but $400, $400 fine stuck, so I wasn't happy. So. so you had to pay $400 to volunteer, basically, is what yes. you're saying. Yes. <laughs> to cut a long story short. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> that was Not so happy. good. No, that was a good one. And and, we, and you know what? You should be able to hit exchange students. <laughs> and that's what I'm taking that's what I from that. That's what that's I took right. out of that. That's what I took out of that. You should be able to strike part. them down as soon as they misbehave. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. <laughs> yes. Good morning to all the exchange students listening to us right yeah, Come stay at my house. Got a spare bedroom. You right? haven't finished. No, Emily's going to finish us off <laughs> one way or the other. Hello, Em. Hi, good morning. Oh, Hi, Em. Now, did you volunteer for something and somewhat regret it? I sure did. We had to do work experience when I was at school, and I think yes. I was about 15 years old, living in Queensland at the time and really into animals. So put my hand up to go to Reef World, this amazing oh, aquarium. Yes. That's right. And they thought, this is fantastic. I've got an unsuspecting victim. <laughs> Emptied the whole seal tank out, and I had to shovel knee deep seal poo out of their huge big tank. <laughs> seal p- so, Okay, so it just goes to the bottom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just, you don't see it from the top. It was huge. I, don't, I wouldn't have any idea how many litres, but, but obviously big. enough for a sea lion to yeah. swim around and be happy for the rest of his life. Oh, sweetheart. Have a dump. <laughs> can I tell you? Can I tell you right now? What do you everybody, think? They go to the toilet? What everybody. Do you do? Oh, at the top, you get a scoop out of it. That was cutting a long story short. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Emily. Well done. Oh, that was a good one. All right. We're about to go to the 9.30 news. <laughs> I tell you what, I love. I was all lost of a you. few times then. Oh my god! Can I say, Angela, Jackie, Mel, Leo, and Emily, you're in with the chance to be um to live free for twenty three. There you are. Three. Even though it's now twenty four. <laughs> <laughs> we missed our six week break. Three hundred dollars to spend at Matilda Bay Restaurant. Matilda Bay Restaurants cray on the bay. Everyone, fresh local crayfish for just forty nine dollars from now until the end of March. It's going to go back to Jackie it who started us off, but there was some absolute doozies in there. Jackie oh. was the live mice and the eagle, right? Yeah, you, yeah. On a second date, yeah. Oh, I mean, Jackie, she told that story so on funny. Monday. Sorry, um, <laughs> we just. I swear, today's podcast you want to you want to yes, download because right. there's some gems in there. If you're not a doctor, some funny. of those stories. <laughs>
<laughs> Eagles, mice, All potatoes. Right. Ellie in Rally Australia. Gagging <laughs> to uh, tell us the news. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.